today's video we will be discussing another oauth flow which is referred as the implicit flow and few of the other documentation also refer that flow as a user agent flow as well in this video we will try to understand this flow we will try to understand how this flow works and what all the benefits as well as the disadvantages of using this flow and why this flow generally we go and avoid for any kind of an integration as well okay but again if you are preparing for a certificate or if you are uh, preparing for the interview it is very important that you guys should also know all the oauth flows and the implicit flow is one of them so before we get started in case you folks like to have one to one connect with me you guys can scan this qr code and connect to me on talkmate as soon as you scan this qr code you will be landed up on this page where there will be two option option number 1 to have one to one connect with me to discuss your sales force queries and another option here is to go and purchase few of the digital products that i am offering like the lwc notes along with the code that i have developed in the boot camp more over the data cloud guide admin guide and also the interview prep guide as well in which there are more than 350 plus interview questions solely based on all the topics of the sales force including the admin apex lwc integrations flows as well as the scenario based questions as well i am confident that this guide will definitely help you to accelerate your preparation for the interview as well moreover in case you folks like to join a wider community where the like minded people do discuss their sales for queries then you can also join this telegram channel as well the link for both of them is available in the video description so you can also check out from there too this is the topic of content for the today's video where we will try to understand what is actually the implicit flow how to use the implicit flow what all the steps that needs to be followed moreover we will go over the use case what all the benefits and the disadvantages of using this flow followed by that there is a quick mcq and finally i will show you how you can use the postman to get connected with the help of the implicit flow as well so the first thing let's go and try to understand what is implicit flow implicit flow it's an oauth 2.0 flow where the grant type design for browser based mobile app so this is a very important part it is designed for the browser based or the mobile application that can't securely store the secrets again if you compare this with the first flow that we have discussed that is the authorization code flow we should go for the authorization code flow where the applications can go and store the secrets but in case your application cannot go and store the secrets then one of the flow that you can use here is the implicit flow so what will happen in the case of implicit flow here is typically the browser based or the mobile based applications which cannot store any which cannot store the client secret right they go and use this flow and then the access token will be generated using this flow salesforce also use this flow for their mobile as as for their mobile application as well as for the mobile publisher as well however across the uh, across the ietf recommendation right what they are recommending here is this flow is something which is less secure and there are better alternatives rather than you go and using this flow why they are commenting why they are making this flow as the less secure we will talk about it down the line but do consider that security wise this is the flow which is not recommended we generally call this flow also as the legacy flow as well because now all the modern applications that we are building we don't go and use this flow there is an alternative of the implicit flow as well about which we will talk in the upcoming video we generally go and use that flow but do remember that this is the less secure flow and the iatf recommendation is not to go and use this flow for your new implementations now let's try to understand how this flow will look like okay so the very first step what will happen here is user will come here and click on the button login with salesforce as soon as user clicked on the button login with salesforce let's say you are on the mobile application or on the browser based application which cannot store the client secret what they will do we go and send the client side application request the key part here is whenever we are sending this request we go and put the response type is equal to token it, we go and put the response type is equal to token in addition to the response type we also put the client id as well as the redirect uri if you have followed the previous video you guys already know what is the client id and what is the redirect uri okay so that is the second step that we have to do we have to go and send the authorization request 
with the response type is equal to token. Do let me know in case you either followed the first video, what is the type that we send whenever we are using the authorization code flow. But in this scenario, do remember that the authorization type will be the token. And now the third step, which is very, very important, what will happen here is user will log in and approve the access. For example, let's say the request come in, I have approved the access. Now what will happen? Why I'm saying that this step is very important. The important step here because as soon as you are providing the approval, what the system will do, system will go and generate the access token. And But your access token is something which is available in your URL. Instead of redirecting with a temporary code, that was the case in the case of authorization code flow, what the system will do here is system will generate the access token directly in the URL. So if you are using this flow, you will have the access token available directly in the URL. And this is kind of a catch whenever you are using the implicit flow. Now, why this is not recommended? As I said, whenever you are making the implicit flow, your access token is something which is available in the URL. As the access token is exposed directly to the browser, there's a high possibility of it is, it is getting stored as a part of browser history or anyone from the client side, JavaScript can also go and access it and there's a possibility of higher risk like the XSS and the token leakage as well. So to avoid it, we generally go and go and use the implicit flow because it will improve the chances that your system can go and manipulate as well. Next one here is as a part of this flow, by default, the refresh tokens are something which are not issued. But at this point, Salesforce have done some tweaks and as per their implementation, they are allowing the refresh token to be issued. Okay, not in the standard core, they don't allow the refresh token should be issued, but the Salesforce does allow a refresh token to be issued here. So this is kind of a generic flow, but Salesforce have made some tweaks to allow the refresh token. Typically, all the single page applications and the legacy mobile apps could not maintain the client secret. In such scenarios, they go and use the uh, implicit flow. As I said, it is a kind of a legacy. All the modern applications, they don't use this flow. There's a better alternative for this flow. And that alternative here is your authorization code flow with PKCE. We will talk about this flow in our series as well, where all the new browser-based applications as well as mobile-based applications, which cannot store the secrets, they go and use this flow. Right? So migrate existing flows. The what the Salesforce recommend here is in case you do have any flow, then migrate away that flow from the traditional implicit flow whenever feasible due to evolving browser cookie and the security restrictions. Nowadays, every day the restrictions are getting increased at the client side as well. And there might be possibility in the near future that the browsers don't allow the implicit flow. So that's why the recommendation here is whenever feasible, make sure that you are moving away from this implicit flow to the authorization code flow as well. I hope it is clear why it is risky because your access token is something exposed to the URL. As your access token is exposed to the URL, there's a possibility of having the different types of attacks and there's a possibility that your access token will be stored as a part of browser history. Right now, there are a few MCQs that I want you to try based on what we discussed on the implicit flow. What is the main characteristic that distinguish the implicit flow from the authorization code flow? I hope you guys have watched the authorization code flow video. In case not, I will put the link in the video description. Do check that out and let me know what is the main difference that makes the implicit flow different from the authorization code flow. These are the four options that we do have in the case, in case the client must exchange a code for a token. The access token is written directly in the client URL. Both uses the refresh token by default and only server side applications are supported. Do let me know which is the option. Uh, which is correct. Again, the next one here is why is the implicit flow generally discouraged in the new application design? What is the reason that the technicians or the tech, uh, OAuth experts don't recommend to use the OAuth flow whenever we are building the new application? What can be the reason? It is more complex, it is less secure, it requires refresh tokens to operate or it is mandatory for all the OAuth client. What is the reason? Next one here is whenever you are sending the query request using the implicit flow, what should be your response type? 
whether your response type should be code, implicit, token, or as well as the implicit. Do let me know the solutions for all these three MCQs in the comment section. And now we will move to the demo part where we'll try to understand how we can go and build the implicit flow with respect to the Salesforce. So again, what we will take as an example here is, for example, let's say I do have the third party client application and in our scenario, that application is the postman, which wants to integrate with the Salesforce, right? Using the OAuth implicit flow. So what all things that needs to be done? So as a part of very first step, you have to go and create the external client app. Again, if you folks have followed the part one, uh, sorry, the authorization code flow video, in that video, I have shown you how you can go and create the external client app. And for this project also, I will be using the same flow only. I'm not making any changes here. So this is the authorization code flow that I do have, right? Where this is the callback URL that I have put. These are the different scopes that I have defined. Take a note on this refresh token. In my flow, if the ref in my scope, if the refresh token is available, then and then only the system will go and generate the refresh token. Otherwise, system will not generate the refresh token. Moreover, I am making the flow enablement for the authorization code and all those stuff. Okay, that is the very first step that you have to do here as well. Moving to the next step, you should go and take a note of the domain name, callback URL, and the client ID. Domain name, you can get it. Let me go and duplicate this from the setup menu you can go and get the domain name we need this domain name whenever we have to integrate with the system so here i can go and type the uh, domain and this is here you can go and get your my domain url okay callback url this is something which is available in your application so callback url is this one if you expand this this is the callback url and the third thing that you want here is the client id so if you clicked on the consumer key and the secret you will be navigated on this page where you can see the client id as well so take a note of these three steps because now we have to go and integrate the postman with the help of the implicit flow right so what we will do we will go and do the redirection to the authorization endpoint this is the step number one that you have to do where you have to go and prepare your authorization endpoint. So let's go and do this. Let's go and prepare our authorization endpoint. So here I'm navigating to the OAuth 2.0 flows of the Salesforce. And here I will be navigating to the implicit flow, which is also referred as the user grant flow. So this is the flow, first flow that we have discussed. Now I'm moving to the second flow, that is the user agent flow. Okay, so this is the first step that I was talking about where you have to go and redirect to the authorization endpoint. So let's see, I'm copying this URL and pasting it here. You can also paste it on the postman as well. Let me do it on the postman. It will be easier to go and create the URL in the postman rather than doing it on the notepad because we avoid all the unnecessary errors whenever we are doing it on the postman. Okay, so we have created the workspace in our last video. So here I am using the same workspace this time I am creating another one and I'm naming that as an implicit flow. Okay. And in this, I'm adding my first request. Let me go and paste what I have copied from here. Okay. Let me go and copy it one more time and paste it here. Okay. Removing all the additional spaces that I do have. Right, so there are four parameters now, response type. As I said, the response type will be token. Client ID, so my client ID is something that I'm copying from here and pasting it in the postman. Right, next thing here is the redirect URI. My redirect URI, I'm taking it from my um, connected app. So this is my redirect URI, which is nothing but a callback URL and using that redirect URI here right and followed by the state again state is something which is an optional parameter again if you scroll down you can see that these are only the mandatory parameter but state is something which is optional in what scenarios we go and use the state for example we want to make sure that whatever the request that you are sending from the client that request is not altered then you can validate that using the state okay this is more like a placeholder which is compared with your response to make sure that your request is not altered. But as I said, this is an optional parameter, so I am skipping that parameter for now. And only sending these three parameters. Okay, 
So this is how my URL will look like. Let me copy this URL and paste it into the browser. Here you can see what the system is asking me for the consent based on the scopes that I have defined on my callback URL. And here I go and click on allow. As soon as I go and allow, as I said, in the case of implicit flow, what happens here is you will get the access token in your URL. So, but you guys can see this is where I do have my access token, right? This is my access token using which what I can do. I can go and send the request. Right. And as I said, in the case of Salesforce, in addition to the access token, you will also get the refresh token as well. Right. You also have the instance URL as well. Right. Moreover, there are, there are a few other information like what all the scopes which are exposed, right? What is the token type? So you will have all those details here. So what I'm copying the access token. Yeah, there's an option called remove link. So let me have this access token. So this is my access token, right? Till this ampersand, whatever you are seeing, this is my access token only. So I'm copying that access token and pasting it here. So this is with this access token, we'll go and send the request to the Salesforce and see uh, whether where my request is successful or not. Here, I will be creating the new request now. So clicking on that implicit flow folder, clicking the new request. Let's say with this new request, again, I am checking the limits so here i am putting the limits uh, request and what i will be doing here is let me get the endpoint from the last request that we have sent can also get this endpoint from the documentation as well and i will also put this endpoint in the video description so you can check out from there too okay so now after that make sure that the domain name that you do have of your org you are putting up here this is my domain name Right, followed by the slash services slash data. Now, what we have to do here is we have to go and set the access token that we have received from the previous request. So this is my access token. I'm copying it from here, putting the bearer token and putting my token here and clicking on save. Now let's go and send the request to see if we are getting the expected response. So after clicking on the send button, you guys can see that I am getting the expected response. That means my implicit flow is working expected and I am getting the response from the system as well. So this is how folks we can use the implicit flow uh, to get the data from the Salesforce using the OAuth 2.0. I hope you folks got the understanding what is implicit flow, what are the benefits of the implicit flow and more important, what are the security risks that you will get with the help of implicit flow as well. This is all. I do have folks for this video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you.